Yeah, I started designing things when I was about three or four years old, at least copying them. You know, I was copying elements of, of, of other artifacts and television sets and hoovers, I remember. And I used to love drawing things. And I realized uh, one day that uh, somebody must design these things. So very quickly, I decided to be a designer. And it wasn't until I was about five or six, I realized I wanted to be a car designer. During the 60s, I found it very difficult to find a way into car design, so I wrote to Bill Haynes, who was the engineering director for Jaguar, to find out a way into this rather elusive job of being a car designer. And he wrote back to me, and uh, it was one of those sort of moments in life you realised there was a, a world out there you could communicate with and, and be part of. And it was almost like just part of the story, you know, the story had been written and that just fell into place. And, you know, subsequently I became design director of Jaguar. So it was uh, a bit of serendipity, really. Coming from a corporate world and then moving into, uh, you know, basically a self-employed world like this was, was quite a, a brave step. I could have just retired, but I don't want to do nothing. I've got to design something. Creative people always want to continue. I actually trained as a product industrial designer in, in Glasgow and I have a fundamental understanding and, 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 and love for product design, car design being part of that. And I realised that when I uh, left Jaguar, I had an opportunity to go back to that basic idea of being a product designer, which can include cars, but also touching on other subjects, which have always fascinated me. One of my favourite subjects when I was at art college was actually furniture design. And uh, that's something we've embarked on again as part of our new company. So it's an opportunity to do all these little things and other projects, eclectic mix of ideas that we didn't necessarily have the opportunity at, uh, at, a, at a car company. I describe Callum as being a sort of new age design house, looking to kind of push the boundaries, tell great stories um, and have some fun doing it. begin with created VC25 um, to give us a little bit of uh, publicity and to, to, to give us a bit of a springboard into designing other things. And that was a very specific project that was, was, was a bit of indulgence on my part. Um, we're picking projects we know we're going to enjoy doing. Challenging, yes. Uh, perhaps subject matter we don't know in everything about, yes. That's all part of learning but certainly something that we know the end product is going to be something that we can enjoy, we can enjoy being proud of, and our customers can enjoy. We want to make certain that we're always ahead of the game. Um, and you, you have to be, um, especially when you're doing these unique products, you always have to look at how you can make that experience better, both internally for the team to make the products look better and perform better, but also to give that experience to the clients. Um, because, because um, Bespoke's a massive part of our business um, and that experience with those clients. So how can you get across exactly what the customer wants and using those you know, um, facilities such as the trim shop or the 3D printers or the, the scanning materials because that allows the client to see it before making the final decision. So it's really important to have all of those little um, those little areas, those little trinkets to make that whole experience better and, it, and at the end of the day it makes the design uh, much better as well. I decided to revisit the Vanquish because it was, it was unfinished business for me. There are really no other products there I've worked on I want to go back to the, the Vanquish led to the Callum business in a kind of practical sense, but I knew in my own mind that when I left my Jaguar job, I would want to start a design business of my own. It's something that I've always wanted to do. It's been in the back of my mind for many, many years. In fact, I contemplated leaving earlier to get on with it until I've actually done this job of an independent design business, I wouldn't be happy. So it was a catalyst to the something that was inevitable. It started off really as, uh, as my attempt to restyle details of it, which I created because I know a little bit more. 
Time has moved on, ideas can be better. And also the technology and those details have got much better as well. So I wanted to do that. The uh, Vanquish 25 is based on an original uh, Vanquish, which was started in 2001, originally designed by Ian Callum, uh, penned about 25 years ago, hence the, we're making 25 cars. Um, but we really take, there's, there's nearly 400 changes that we do to the car. Um, we strip it right back, um, we add additional 80 horsepower, equal length primaries, go all the way back, all induction systems, um, 80 foot-pounds of torque more, pretty much an all new interior, obviously which was developed with, by Gary and the team. Dynamic-wise, I think we spent nearly a month down at, uh, with Michelin, one of our great partners down there. Um, to work on, on dynamics, on uh, damper tuning, tyre setup, um, and then even just from the, the small part of just the exterior styling. Um, obviously Ian and the designers were working on not making a brand new Vanquish, but taking the original Vanquish and tuning it to today's styles with today's technologies and making it kind of what you would want a Vanquish to be today. The Vanquish was one car that Ian discussed at length with me about there was just something just wasn't finished with it you know during that time he had a you know he had cost constraints time constraints and he just felt that it it, it needed a it, it needed a revisit so hence the whole 25 was obviously 25 years since Ian put pen to paper and you know walking around with Ian with the car it's just amazing when you start asking why, why was it designed like that what was the reasons for that and and then you hear what he really wanted, but what he couldn't have, whether it was because the technology wasn't available at the time or uh, there was some cost constraints or, or whatever. And we were like, right, just write them all down. And then that's where, and this is the best thing about Callum is that getting the engineers and the designers to be as one. And I know that sounds a little bit cliche, but you know, designers want to stretch the boundaries engineers should be those people who get excited by that problem and that stretching those boundaries and getting them both to align and that is what we've done you just have to look at um, some of the areas of the of the vanquish um, like uh, the rear diffuser and how if you look at the back of a, a vanquish it's got let's just say it's got those reflectors in the bottom areas and it's a there's big bit of plastic at the bottom you can see there's been some cost constraints or some timing constraints whereas Ian wanted a full diffuser but that requires exhaust box and the diffuser to work together and that's it that's a real challenge for an engineer to get a get their head around that and how we're going to manufacture that and that's what they did and uh, it's a beautiful piece of art so it's something that that both the engineers and the designers should be proud of I remember getting the guys when Ian said I want the new wheels right. and uh, the designers started sketching loads of wheels. We had must, maybe like 30 wheels designed. Ian came in after we'd done a few sketches and he just said, oh no no, hold on, I don't, I don't want a new design, I just want it bigger and I just want it, it stretched a bit more to give more dish to the wheel. I like the wheel, what, we've, what I designed 25 years ago but I think it doesn't fill the arches enough. I think it needs to be a bit bigger, but I also think we can make that dish better. And for me, that was a real tipping point to getting really into what actually is this car. This is not a, a body kit. This is like going around with the original designer and him going, I like that design, I like that bit. I just wish it had been that, that just little bit better. Dare I said, dialing to 11, you know, the spinal tap thing. But you know, that was like, oh, okay, I see that, rather than just, oh, let's just do a load of wheels and, and, and make it new. He said, no, no, sometimes I don't want it looking different. I just want to improve it. And then when you got into the interior, you know, Ian was like, I really, uh, I really want to change this. The whole cockpit was um, uplifted and modernized um, to suit the, the driver, so the, um, the instrument panel, uh, the user interface um, was all modernised. Everybody has a phone that they want to connect to a car, so we had 
CarPlay integrated into the IP. So we just modernized in, in, that, in that respect. We changed the seats. The seats on the original car um, were quite, I mean, the styling at the time was, was relevant, but the, the target that was set um, aimed for a more sleeker and, and sharper and streamlined look. We also wanted to lower the seat significantly to um, aid a, uh, a more integrated driver experience. The, the seats had a, a massive overhaul. You know, we, we changed the foams, the squab, the cushion, um, working with Ian's design team to um, apply his signature Callum um, tartan embroidery. The whole interior was, um, was changed for the better. But I, I definitely think that when we first launched the Vanquish, there was definitely a, a preconception that it was just a, a design body kit. That we, we just kind of just changed the exterior and that was it. Um, but as you know, we've got a sort of a heavy engineering side to things. Um, and the experience within the team means that it, we're not just, we don't just produce things which are skin deep. We go right to the core of what we're, what we're making and trying to make it really, really special. I always make certain that whoever it is, clients, suppliers, press, to go out in the old one to, to sort of um, rebalance what the Vanquish was like, because it is a 20-year-old car, 25-year-old car, and then get them to go into our car, both from a visual point of view and from a dynamic point of view, because they've got a perception in their head because the Vanquish was so good, and that's a credit to Ian and the Aston Martin team at the time. But you gotta you gotta respect that it is a twenty year old car and therefore go out in that twenty year old car. You're all we're all now used to cars now. So go out in this now this, and they start going, wow, this is a more of a modern vehicle. Whether, you know, whether it's the gearbox or the automatic gearbox that we've developed, um, just the fit and finish, the NVH, the whole sort of noise and vibration, the feel back, how how the car sort of rides over the road rather, and makes, makes you feel a lot more connected with the road rather than uh, feeling every bump and steer because it, 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 it is a classic car. So it drives amazing. I, it's a car I could take on an, on an everyday journey. You can obviously take it out on a Sunday, but it's not something a Sunday drive. It'll be, you could take it out you know, and, and go to work in it and still feel like, oh, I feel this is an ev everyday car, not that <laughs> Not that everybody will use it for that, but it's a, it's a car, because it's a beautiful GT car. To me, it's now the car it should perhaps always, maybe should have been. But of course, 25 years ago, technology was different, processes were different. And the other great advantage is, because we're building so few of them, it's a handmade car. And so I can make parts, or we can make parts, you know, machine parts, or we can, we can print parts now. Uh, that we couldn't do in full volume. So many opportunities uh, have arisen because we're making the small, small volume. I'm not quite sure what's next for Callum because uh, that's the nature of what we do. You know, we'll have people call us and see if we'd be interested in doing this or doing that. We'd pursue certain companies to see if we can offer up ideas to them. And there are one or two ideas I really want to pursue, which I won't talk about because they're still confidential, but um, you know, it's it's a it's it's an open door, and and we'll see what comes through it. And then we're doing some other really um, interesting projects that are non-automotive related. That's probably the thing we're going to focus on, um, because again, we want to make certain that Callum's not seen as just an automotive design and engineering company. Yes, we've got a lot of history in automotive, but. When, when you work in the automotive industry, it's still a product at the end of the day that has to do a number of um, activities, not only look good, perform well and be safe. So if you, can, if, you can, if you can tick all those boxes, you can do pretty much anything, any other product. And that's, um, that's, that's what we want to make sure we get across to people. I want whatever comes through the door that is something that we want to work on and we want to be passionately involved with. Otherwise, we're not interested. And that's very important because passion has a lot of power in it. <laughs>